Hi there, my name is Dan Rosman from Abnet Electronics Marketing. Today, I would like to briefly show you what you can do with the iBert design we generated in the first video. Let's get started. First, I attached my Pico Z7015 to my Pico Z FMC carrier card. This is a Rev C03 board, which for this board is the recommended level of revision for working with transceivers. Next, I set the board down and used a pick to set my frequency to 250 MHz. Other frequencies can be seen in the schematic. Next, I have wired in two SMA based cables to a Xilinx HW FMC XM 104 G. I wired TXP to RXP and TXN to RXN. I used a wrench to lightly snug the SMA cables to the connector. This then connects to my FMC connector. Do not forget your FMC mounting screws. Next, I have a SFP Plus rated loopback adapter, which I will plug into the SFP Plus cage. Next, I wire in two of the same type of SMA cables that were used on the XM104. I wire to the J19 to J22 connectors. The pattern is the same as the FMC, TXP to RXP and TXN to RXN. Again, use a wrench to lightly tighten the cable ends. Now I have a high-tech global PCI loopback card, which I've already attached SMA cables to. I need only plug my Pico Z FMC carrier card into this. Because of the vertical nature, it helps to put something under one end of the Pico Z FMC carrier card to help support it. Here I'm using a USB wall adapter from my cell phone. Finally, I plug my Digilent JTAG HS3 adapter into the JTAG port as well as power. You can power this through the Hitech Global card or from the Pico Z carrier card itself. Here we have the iBert design, which we built for the Pico Z SOM, which has a ZC7015 Zinc. 7000 all programmable SOC. Since it is finished, let's click on Open the Hardware Manager and say OK. Next, we're going to click on Open Target with Auto Connect. This will automatically determine what is on the other end of the JTAG. If your design has multiple devices, you may need to use Open Target from the project flow. Next, click on Program. And we're going to choose the 7015. You can see that in this particular window, everything that's relevant has been put in. And we can say program. Once this finishes, we get a message. Do you want to auto detect serial IO links for the iBert core? Sure. And it has created four links, which is exactly what we expected. And as you can see, zero bit errors. With these four links, we have MGT 0, 1, 2, and 3. 0 being our PCIe link, 1 being our SMA, 2 being our SFP Plus link, and 3 being our FMC link. As you can see, so far we have zero errors. If you're seeing e to the negative 12 or less for bit error rate, this is a good indicator that your performance is good for most protocols. How long it takes for you to see this is dependent upon how fast your bit rate is. I will generally, generally run a test for about 20 minutes. However, as I said, it really depends on how fast your bit rate is. This concludes this tech tip. Please join me in the next tech tip, which will cover adjustments to our transceivers, 
which is necessary for basic troubleshooting and performance enhancements. Here at Avnet, we are committed to accelerating your success through hands-on practical training and design support. Thank you for your time.